Shelf sign unboxing. Today we have, oh my god, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. We have it. The predecessor, wait, no, the sequel. The sequel to Gloomhaven. <laughs> and we have Daniel so here. Is it really a sequel? I thought it was more just like a weird, like, standalone intro thing. It's not even really an expansion because you can just buy it and play it as its own thing. I guess so. It's meant to get newcomers in here. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, Daniel here is a residential, or is a resident Gloomhaven expert. He's on the laptop right I, here. I do want to point out that I am not in his residency. Uh, hello, I'm in my own house. Yep. And dude, shout out to Cephalo, Cephalo Fair Games. Price Johnson sent us his game. Oh my god, we were gonna go to Target. Incredibly, incredibly handsome man. Oh, uh, absolute, oh like beautiful, beautiful beauty of a man. Oh man. <laughs> they have a good marketing dude. All right, okay, before I get too distracted thinking about Price Johnson's face, uh, I guess we'll just open this. <laughs> Price Johnson. Based on the highest rated board game of all time. They really know what they're doing with their marketing here. Oh man, oh man. Cephalo Fair Games, killing it. Surprise so uh, sent us a like message on Facebook and he was basically just like, oh my god, we really like your every whatever uh, class Gloomhaven videos ever, right? And he was like, okay, you guys, you guys are champs. You guys are awesome. We want to send you Jaws of the Lion early. And when I was like, oh my god, what the, is this for real? And he's like, yeah, this is for real. No strings attached. Just have it. Uh, yeah, just do stuff with it. And I was like, cool. That sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah, I like free things. <laughs> Because we were going to make a video actually going to Target to actually go buy this in person, but thanks to Price Johnson, they don't have to do that. Yeah, we actually got this early, which is crazy, but are filming this probably like four days before it actually goes up, because we are not allowed to show you what the hell is going on until June 21st, which is when it's actually being released. Yeah, I thought it was July, but you know, they got they, they did some uh, shenanigans, pushed out early, so that's cool. Let's open it up. Oh, oh man, that's tight. <laughs> oh my god. They're tight, dude. Okay, we're getting there. How's it feel being part of VIP Club, huh? This is Ooh. exclusive. Not many people have access to this right now. Oh man, yeah. Is, it, is that safe to smell it? Anyways. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so the first thing you see, it says, Welcome to Gloomhaven. Stop. Read this before you do anything else. Oh yeah, because there's some stuff in that box that's spoilers, so you should probably actually read that so we know what to actually show. <laughs> there are four booklets as well as a map board. So another map, see behind us we have a map of Gloomhaven, we're gonna get another one. It says do not open A, B, C, D marking boxes. Okay, don't open those. Yeah, and I think that is it. They even don't, do don't open the character classes in level 5 onwards. Like those, they're their cards, you know. They give you Ziploc bags and a plastic tray accordingly, let's see how that looks. Dude, this is a godsend, they're actually answering all of my goddamn complaints about the base game, holy. Yeah, so the first thing you see after that is a learn to play guide. So this is kind of like a mini rule book, I'm assuming. And it's so streamlined, yes! Dude, it really has, I feel like visually this is a lot more enticing than the- This looks a lot more like those Google Drive PDF style see that people would post on the community being like, hey, I made a better, like, uh, how to play for Gloomhaven. There's Ooh. multiple books too. So this is a glossary. This book is literally just a glossary. So we have a giant glossary and let's see how that looks. Okay, it's alphabetical. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, nice. Oh, do we finally have an appendix we can use for the actual game? Holy. <laughs> Speaking of appendix, there's a card anatomy appendix and oh my gosh, they really thought- You're telling me we're just gonna have this open way I actually play Gloomhaven. Ooh, I know, ooh. yeah. That's Monster turns appendix, component list. Com oh my God, look at that. Okay, so we have a, what, what do you call this, like a... Notebook with like spirals. Like a spiral, spiral <laughs> bound notebook, kind of, kind of fancy. So this is Wait, a what, is that, what does the text say in the front of it? Like, a what, supplemental what is scenario book. Okay, so don't turn past scenario five, I think, was what the Gloomhaven subreddit said. Oh, okay, so this is scenario three, and then it jumps to scenario seven, so I guess we should not be reading this. What the f... Oh, because they're probably doing a thing where like, uh... To hide information better, they actually do it like one of those choose your own adventure books where you actually jump around. Well, here's the actual scenario book, and it has flavor text right on the front. Pretty exciting. In the first page, okay, scenario one. That is so cool seeing like the map tiles just be on the book itself and you just put your pieces there. Dude, that will save you so much setup time. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, that's pretty cool because now they're putting a lot of like, what are you, tips? Tip boxes. Oh yeah, they could put a right on the map itself, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, there's like, okay. They can also make the maps a lot more detailed and specific to what they want things to actually look like. It reminds me of the Gloomhaven video game, like on Steam. Like, instead of having the generic tiles you have from Gloomhaven, now you have like things that are very specific to what the scenario like actually is. They did a good job of working around the spiral bound to make sure the miniatures don't really go on it. 
and visually it looks so cool like it actually looks a lot more like a video game and this is scenario three. Ooh, look at that freaking ship okay awesome I'm gonna play this. Yeah, tonight. I think every scenario is supposed to like introduce you to more and more mechanics as it goes on. It doesn't just kind of doesn't just front load everything into like the base game, you know. Mm. And then a ritual, which is why it goes up to five. Once you go past it, then like stuff actually starts happening. I think. Let's see. This is the last one, scenario five. And I like how the maps they all like they're shaped a lot different from each other. This one's like. Yeah, but also it teaches you like how to play with the environment too, because you know that's a useful skill to know in Gloom even. Like you pretty much have to get used to like big open spaces, narrow spaces, places with lots of obstacles, places with terrain. Place with traps, right, etc. This is freaking sick. Yeah, I dig it. Okay, we're not gonna go any deeper than scenario five. So yeah, that'll be it for the scenario book. And then we have location stickers. Stickers. Sticker stickers. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is stuff you add to the map. Cool. Hell yeah, dude. More punch outs that I'm probably not gonna use because I already have like you know a bunch of my own stuff. Pretty heavy duty though. I think these are pretty comparable to what we have in base game. More punch out. Oh, that's so weird seeing the elements be punch out. What the heck? Yeah, that's kind of weird. And this is new, right? This may be some terrain. No, that's uh, that's poison traps. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> you've seen all this before. Treasure chest. Stats, yeah, we're not going to use those though because we'll maybe new monsters. I don't know how long we should look at this without spoiling ourselves, but yeah. I think some of those are from the base game and others are new. Okay. So, yeah, I, t I tend to not look at the monsters on unboxing. I just kind of glance over there. Hey, we have new monsters. I put it away very quickly. New monsters. <laughs> oh, look at that. We have the elements. Oh, those are definitely board. new. What the hell are those? Punch out. These. Oh, no, there's, a, there's a golem there. It's like right there. Yeah, I don't the, know the, we've seen the golem before. Uh, I think we've seen this before. The rest might be spoilers. More half spoilers. I don't spoilers. know what's going on there. Yeah, half spoilers here. And then we have uh, more terrain. Uh, this is definitely new. You see this text for all these monsters? They're cardboard cutouts. Punch outs. Now, with the map. Oh, this looks freaking amazing. So it's just... Oh, I thought that was going to be inside the scenario book, too, but yeah, it's its own thing. Oops. <laughs> it almost feels like something you'd find in a Euro game. And I mean that as like a praise. It feels very concise. This will be changing. Stickers. Stickers. Okay. Now we have these. Yes. Hey, health dials. Oh, I checked them. Are they tighter than normal Gloomhaven? Because the Gloomhaven has a little bit of a Lucy issue. They are... Okay, this is tight. This is tight. This is pretty tight. It's pretty tight. Ooh. But they could loosen overplay. I'm not sure. But so far, pretty cool. Okay, well, this is something Shelfside loves, which are inserts. Pre-made inserts. You beautiful bastards. You went and did it. You went and addressed Gloomhaven's issues with getting newcomers into the game. They did it. And there's even a cover, so pieces don't fly around when you're, like, moving around the box. The mad lads, dude. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's really weird thinking that this game probably just ups Gloomhaven's recommender score just like that. Yeah, it's kind of weird because we can always say, hey, if you don't have the money or you don't think you have the time, try this out. Let's go on to miniatures. Speaking of miniatures. So we have this All one. Right, so, oh, I see those boxes. Yeah, do not open the red stickered boxes. Yeah, you can open everything else though. Let's open it up. Okay. Whew. There we go. Is that the small guy? I do believe that is the demolitionist, which is basically this game's baby crack heart. Ah. Pretty sure he's a quadro. Same race as a tinkerer. Except instead of, you know, tinkering, he just makes things explode, so... Yeah. They, they know they know what they're, who they're trying to appeal, appeal to here, you know? This is some type of chain-looking thing? Yeah, I think that's the red hook. It's basically just Kratos from God of War. Oh, nice. Okay. So you want to hit them with, like, the ends of your weapon, not, like, on the inside, because, you know, there's a chain and then, like, a hook, right? Dude, this guy looks sick. I would play it. This guy kind of looks like, uh... Uh, I mean, it's hard for me to make out the teachers and adventure, so I'll take your word for it. Uh, it's like a <laughs> kind of like a Spartan warrior sort of guy. Yeah, freaking uh, look at that detail. Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> now this is funny because this has like a very Greek vibe to it, whereas the rest of Gloomhaven, I don't get that feeling. Oh, I'm pretty sure that guy's race is the uh, same as the you know that like lady on the cover of Gloomhaven, right, with the fucking like tail and the hood. Oh, the oh yeah yeah it is yeah it does have the horn horn tail. Hey, so this one looks like a wand. Yeah, I don't remember what that class is called. I just remember it's like a cool weird support class that has like black magic nonsense going on. Okay. Open it up. say I had like Void in the name. Ooh, void Warden. Oh, I, I think it was the Void Warden. That's what it was called. This is a big one. From what I remember, what people were saying and what little I have looked at. Because I don't want to spoil myself too much, right? I want to I be able to open up this box and get like excited about what I'm seeing. You take control of your like allies and let them attack like extra times or something like weird thing like that. That is really cool. Okay, this- Oh, dude, look at that, it's Draven. Draven. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually not joking that that class is just Draven. 
<laughs> for those who don't know, like in League of Legends, the champion named Draven, he throws his <laughs> axe, swords, whatever those are, and they bounce off things, you have to catch them again. This is kind of like that. Ah, uh, the League Like, of it has its own token that is an axe you have to, like, go and, like, fetch. Dude, oh my god! Dude, this guy is like a... Okay, I've been reading a lot of Stephen King. He looks like a gunslinger sort of guy. Yeah, so he's an Enox, he, a big, big guy, and he throws big axes, and you have to go and get your axes every time you use uh, you use your big axes. These are the class boxes. Should I open that? Yeah, you can. If there's a red uh, red envelope, then yeah, a red sticker. I mean, so those are, those are just the class envelopes. Yeah, so that's like the uh, demolitionist stuff. So yeah, you can totally open that. See, we learned on our Gloomhaven unboxing. Uh, we totally did not open any of the class stuff, which might have been disappointing to people. Very dense. All right, so I, I saw a big red no-no sticker on one of those packets of cards, so that's the one you probably leave alone, I think. So it says, HALT! Big red, like a stop sign. Do not open this uh, pack of cards until this character reaches level 5. Oh uh, yeah, that was a level 5 card, yeah, don't know, yeah, leave that completely alone. Yeah. That's pretty cool, they like seal that off, and this is... kind of the same thing, but it says don't open it until you're directed to do so. So we have these two ones that you can open, so I guess we're gonna go ahead and open yeah, that. Yeah, so there's the uh, attack deck modifiers and the uh, actual class ability cards. Okay, let's see, and they have a little Oh wait, is that deck? actually like a quick start like, tutorial like card that tells you what's up? Like, It's, it's a player cool. reference, so it shows you all the um, jargon they use. So muddle, immobilize, stun, strengthen, disarm. It's all here. Oh, the status effects, I mean, yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah status effects. Jargon. Oh, they have a round overview right here. That's nice. Good. Okay, and why are there blue things? There? What, what is heck? going on? Why is there so much color? <laughs> okay, well, let's start with the level one ones because that probably makes more. Wait, what? Oh, it's it's in the middle. Okay, so the level one ones do not have that blue. Yeah, what is up with those blue cards? What the heck? It's basically explaining what the the card does. Yeah. So this is an attack three muddle, and basically the blue block says. One adjacent enemy suffers three damage and gains disadvantage on its attack. So the disadvantage. So are they is just much. copies of the level one cards, but they just have like uh, supporting text on them? Oh, well, they're they're a little simplified, but they're about the same. Yeah. So that is really cool for like newcomers because it's like, hey, what does my card do? Oh, it says right here. Very nice. These guys know what they're doing, dude. These guys are experts. Dude, and I love how it just. And pops. Price Johnson is extremely handsome. <laughs> dude. Okay, this is how you get people to play your game, like. Designers, take note, because this is really, really cool. Yeah, dude, they really they really did the Ooga Booga very well. Yeah, when people are playing, they don't have to ask, like, the game owner, hey, what does that do? What does this term mean? It just says on that blue box. Okay, so these are all the stat modifiers. Uh, pretty basic. Uh, if you know Gloomhaven, this looks exactly the same. This is your board, but look, they made it vertical. Uh, what the heck? Yeah, what? I did not... Yeah. Huh? What's, What's on the back side? Uh, flavor text. The flavor text? Yeah. Oh, okay. Pretty nice. But, that's- Oh, cause they- okay, cause the right side of the boards in basic Gloomhaven had like the round overview stuff, so they, they just got rid of that entirely. The Gloomhaven class, uh, boards, whatever you call those, yeah. are very confusing. It's like, what? Like, why is there just a randomly out of space on the right side? It's just there for overview. Like, I, I like this, cause now you have more space to have all your cards, so you can see them easier. Well, it's also, yeah, it's really just, yeah. you know, a picture of the portrait of the class, and yeah, more space to put your cards around it. That's, that's super sick. Yeah. So now we have this. Oh, they made them a little thinner. Okay, fair enough. There's less There's less pages in here. Yeah. Yeah, but it's basically... Yeah, like, like, I never use those because it's going to be an helper. And also campaign though. naps, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you have your character tokens. Mm-hmm. This is the, the chain guy, right? This is a... Uh, Red Hook. This guy, yeah. I think it was called. The guy who looks like a, like a Spartan sort of thing. Okay, so... Let's see what's inside. Ooh, the Red Guard. That is his name. Oh, the red guard, oops. Yeah. Okay, it's not the red hook, my bad. I mean, the red hook sounds cooler. He looks uh, a little skinnier <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. Valrath, red guard. That's uh, what I call Valrath, yeah. okay. And then we have everything you need. All here. We've got the two halts. And this player pad. So let's take a look at this before we finish. So we got a player reference, of course, and then see they're doing the same thing with this blue box that gives you the tutorial thing. <clears throat> yep. Nice. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the brief overview of this class works is he's kind of like, yeah, he has a hook on a sword, right? So you have to make sure you hit people at the ends of the 
weapon, I think. Flaming sickle, blinding sickle, twirling stabs. Are they, yeah, they're all like attack, like range something, right? Desert knight, shocking advance. Uh, some of them have range, not all of them do. Oh, okay. Like his, uh, his desert knight does not, shocking advance does not. Okay, so you have some melee, I mean, like, it makes sense, you don't always have to throw your sword around if it's on a chain, you can just run up with the sword, you know? <laughs> so the twirling stabs is kind of like spin to win. Like yeah, so, we have, we, so we have our Demolitionist, who is just doing nonsense. Yeah. Uh, we have our Bruiser, we have our ranged guy in the hatchet, and then we have the support in the Void Warden. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ooh, okay. Halt. Yep, same deal. Okay, so we're not gonna look at that, same deal. Uh, we're not gonna look at that, it's just the modifiers. Ooh, that what is- race is the Void Warden? Nice looking art. Yeah, I think she's like the, the most human looking, right, out of all of them, that's the idea. I mean, I can't really talk the arts, so I'm gonna have to go off of you. <laughs> okay. Void Warden, nice. This kind of has like a, like a planeswalker sort of vibe. She is a human, yeah. Humans are by far the most dominant of all races. Spreading across the continent yep. like locusts. Exact same thing it says on the scoundrel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, you gotta, you gotta keep in line with the humans, you know. The humans. They're, they're a plague on the world. <laughs> Spreading like locusts, oh my gosh. Okay. So we have the player reference, uh, Black Boon. Turn out yeah, so this lights. is a really weird support class, from my understanding. Okay. Wicked Scratch. Suggestion. Gift of the Void. Suggestion, huh? So yeah, there's, there's some mind-controlling nonsense going on in here, right? Ah, Lure of the Void. Okay. Okay, put it right back in. Last one, we have the Axe Man. Hatchet, I think, is hatchet? what the class is called. Yeah. It looks actually more like a hatchet, now that you, you mention it. I mean, this is literally just Draven, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, halt, halt. Attack modifier, this is the reference cards, and let's take a look. His name is literally Hatchet, okay. Now the question is, where's the Hatchet token? Because I know that's a thing he has, but I don't I don't know where it is. Oh, maybe it's in the cardboard cutouts. Okay, in the back, Inox Hatchet. And it just talks about the Inox, okay. Okay, reference card, Stopping Power. Well, no, 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 ignore all that. There's one core card that you like pretty much always is going to be using. It's the one that literally is a wall of text. Like, I, 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 I go back, you went past it. The favorite? Yeah, so this is this card is like basically core to how this entire class plays. Like, essentially, it's just like a passive like modifier that makes it so that your first like range attack does like omega uber more damage. And you have to go over to the spot and then pick it back up to get its effect back again. So it's like his favorite hatchet? Is that the idea? I guess, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. The, 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 the class revolves around that gimmick, apparently. That sounds very fun, yeah. And then all these things, right? Stopping power, double throw, disorienting barrage, second wind, center mass, close cuts. Yeah. Okay, so I have the, the box in front of me. Uh, let's go the to insert. monsters. Yeah, so we have... Oh, dude. Oh my god. They put in, uh, what do you call it? Blue text for all the monsters. Or at least these hey. ones. Yeah. Okay, this is so thick, I cannot hold it without yeah, just, falling. Okay. Yeah, but just don't read their names, just like... I guess you can read the names of something basic, like, there's like a guard in there, like, sure. Basic... There's like a yeah, basic Vermling Raider. <laughs> yeah, that's probably fine, yeah. <laughs> Screaming shot, careful throw, dual daggers, nothing special. Hmm. Yeah, even more monster stands right here. Yeah, we're, we are never gonna run out of those. Yep. And we even got some plastic bags. Hell yeah! Very nice. Yeah, it's probably for all the tokens that are nonsense. It's nicely wrapped up. I can tell there's quite a bit of them. Probably at least like seven, maybe. Yeah, nice. Uh, let's see More what else enough is what I'm hearing. Oh, they also probably double as uh, dividers for the insert. Oh yeah, new events. Okay, encounter events. And then we have- I don't read events also, that's another thing that's spoiler. Unavailable items and available items. Yeah, so see, these are dividers. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, this is the um, the monster thing. The, the monster stats, yeah. Yeah, I'll just open it real quick. It's so the same deal, right? It's just like, you know, yeah. eight uh, levels of monster, right? They're all double-sided. It goes from level zero to seven. I don't want to spoil too much, but this is kind of, you know, an idea. It looks about the same as Gloomhaven. If you show him the boss, you are a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, and then we also have, of course, the monster sleeves. Yeah, the envelopes for monsters, yeah. yeah. It's, it's literally the same thing as Gloomhaven base. Feels the same. I mean, yeah, yep. nothing wrong with that. But they did set up the answer in a way where you can like, there's a little gap, so you can just grab things really easily. We have four things left. 
And these are the general attack modifier decks. Mm -hmm. And I mean, nothing special, right? Those are the monster ones here. And then we have. And then there should be one, two, three, fours on the. Oh wait. No, that's that's. I think that's all monster stuff. So it's their attack modifier deck, and then their debuffs and buffs, and like yeah. Okay. Blessings so and curses. Oh, for monster and this. Your... That's probably one for auto. Oh, that's items. Okay. These are items. Yeah. So, yep. Uh, yeah. If you open those, don't go past item thirteen. I think. Okay. These are the available items. Let's take a look. Eagle eye goggles. Yep. Oh yeah, classic. Uh, iron helmet. Okay. Iron. Hel Wait, are these the same items in normal gloomhaven? What the hell? Chain armor, studded leather. Oh, chain armor. That's new. Weather boots. I think that's new. Yeah, that's pretty. That's Wing new. shoes. That's we've had that before, right? Yeah. Heater shield. Is that heater shield? That might be new, right? Oh, war hammer. Hell yeah. Throwing hammer. Yeah, yeah. A throwing hammer. Yeah. During your range. Oh, that's not war hammer. Never mind. During okay. your range attack, add stun to an attack. Nice. Oh, uh, because it probably realized Warhammer was fucking busted, so yeah, they got rid of it. Poison Dagger, nice. Iron Spear, Healing Potions, and Stamina Potions, and Power Potions. Wait, Stamina Potions got nerfed, right? Read them real quick. Uh, during your turn, return one of your discarded cards to your hand. Ah, it's one and not two, they learned. Too good, yeah. Okay. Oh, but they got rid of the Boots of Striding, too. Oh, yeah, they man. got rid of that. <laughs> I guess, so they got rid of all the busted items. Okay, that's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> well, they might be in uh, Unlockables. Yeah, so we have these... Uh, like the oh, battle goals. Battle goals, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I should open them up. No, you can't. It's fine. Okay. But you probably shouldn't read them because, you know, you want to, like, keep it a secret for when we actually play. So that they're, like, actually like, oh, I've never seen this battle goal before. Actually, if these battle goals are different from the ones in Gloomhaven, I'm going to be so happy because then, like, we're already starting to see repeats with the Gloomhaven battle goals. So, like, having more battle goals is always just fun. Okay, just off of name recognition alone, they seem different. Oh, thank God. Okay. Because I'll definitely use it. I'll definitely use as a normal gloom even then if that's the case. Last thing that's in shrink wrap that we can unbox. I mean, it's the vents. Yeah, don't don't say anything about what's going on with those. That makes sense. Ooh, okay. Here we go. All the vents. Yeah. Yeah. Not gonna really read them, but yeah. Are there no road events? That's interesting. Yeah, they're all. Oh, I guess there's no traveling in this game since the map is literally just Gloomhaven. They're all city, yeah. So we have all the components for Jaws of the Lion out in front of me. Let's go over it. This is the map. Stickers. Four character envelopes. Take a look at what's inside real quick. In each envelope, you got character portrait, character tokens, attack modifier deck, more attack modifier cards, character ability cards, and more character ability cards. And of course, we got the player pad. We got the health and EXP trackers, the four character minis, these unknown boxes, A, B, C, D, monster attack decks, monster stands, Ziploc bags, plastic insert. We got six sheets of cardboard punch outs, monster attack modifiers, item deck, battle goals, card dividers, monster stat sheets, monster stat sleeves, and we got three rule books and two scenario booklets. Okay, it's time for the shelf side reboxing. Let's see how the box cover goes on. It's gonna be real tight. Oh. But everything fits pretty solidly. Ooh, there we have it. Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. That many things in one box. That's pretty crazy. Wow, okay, well, yeah, shout out again to Cephalo Games and Price Johnson at Cephalo Fair Games for giving us this. Freaking sick. Based on the highest rated board game of all time. Well, I'll see you guys next time and we have a lot of Gloomhaven stuff coming up in the future, so. Subscribe for that. See you guys later. Bye bye. Oh, that is heavy. Computer voice near me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you pick up on the mic. <laughs> <laughs>